What if I told you that you don't need all of these consoles and controllers to play all of your favorite games while staying comfortable on your couch, and that you don't need to spend a lot of money on a second gaming PC for the living room? I'd like you to put yourself in my shoes for a moment so you can see how I've come about to this setup, because it took a surprisingly long way to come back just a short distance, that is, from my office to the couch. You see, I've already set up my gaming PC with various emulators to be able to play almost every game in one place, but there is just one problem. It's in my office. I've been looking for ways to play games on my couch because as well, let's face it, it's comfy. Yes, I already have an Xbox, but if I want to play one of my retro games or a PC game, then what? I'm usually confined to playing in my desk chair at my desk in my office, where I spend too much time already, clearly. So when I boot up a game to have fun or relax, sometimes I don't want to be tethered to my desk anymore, and the couch is where it's at. That much I shouldn't have to explain to you, but I figured I should get this much out of the way because yes, at the end of the day, if anything in this setup is not working or not up to par, I could just walk back over to my office chair, problem solved close the books, so don't light up my comments section about how this setup isn't working or whatever because this is always the fallback. Anyway, this might sound like a pitiful problem to have, and it should be easily solvable, right? Well, the reason I'm making this video is because I ran into a few more snags than I thought I would, and I think this information might be important to some of you. So in order to make this setup happen, I set out on my journey of a thousand steps just like anyone else would. A good old Google search. After my initial Googling, I realized the solution was not but an internet query away because, well, there are just so many different ways to do something like this depending on your setup and your needs. So in order to make sure that going down the rabbit hole is worth it, I set myself some specific criteria that this project of mine should accomplish. Number one, I know I'm lazy, so I want to be able to wake the system via a controller, just like a console. Two, I know I'm lazy, so I want to have all my games in the same menu. Three, I know I'm lazy, so however this setup comes together, I want the game saves to be synced. I'd also like to mention that what I don't need is perfect accuracy in the living room, because I know that playing on a TV with a wireless controller is never going to be as perfect as sitting at my desk using my monitor, keyboard, wired controller, etc. So if I'm ever trying to play something competitively, either with my friends or online, I know I'm going to be in my office chair anyway, so I don't need that perfect accuracy in the living room. And some of those games are more likely to require a keyboard and mouse anyways, which I'm just not going to do on the couch, so off as it is. Finally, before we get to my ultimate setup, we have to discuss the failures, because there is just as much to learn from what didn't work as to what did. And one of these failures for my setup just might be your perfect setup. So. In the beginning, when I realized I needed retro games in my life in the living room, I tried a PlayStation Classic that I got for $20 modded with Project Eris so that I could play all kinds of retro games on it. Basically at this point it's like any kind of retro pie. But it could only emulate up to PS1 era games. So I soon became hungry to add more systems to an emulation console. Of course, it still couldn't play PC games, so I got a Steam link on the cheap. But the 2016 hardware is kind of aging, and it was a bit laggy and just unreliable to recommend. Later on, I secured an Xbox Series S, which you may or may not know that outside of playing Xbox games, it's actually a pretty good emulation box. I installed RetroArch in dev mode and gave it a try. I really liked the idea of this because you can wake the system via a controller. There's an alpha core for PS2 on RetroArch available, so you can do PS2 games. But after testing, I found out that it couldn't really run PS2 games that well, or GameCube if you want to do multiplayer, etc. There was just too many caveats. So it wasn't quite up to everything I wanted in the living room, but we were getting closer. I even contemplated building a second living room PC, which many others have done. But that seemed expensive for this use case, especially considering what GPU prices have been lately, and still doesn't solve the problem of being able to use a controller to control it natively. But then you would also have to have some method of syncing your game save files. So it was a lot of money to sync into something that I didn't even really know was going to work for me. So I took a step back and thought about this some more. I was eyeing up my Steam link, thinking of what a better option might be, when my caveman brain finally came to a realization. I have another black box with game streaming capabilities sitting right next to it. My Apple TV 4K. You see, the Steam Link hardware came out in 2016, so it's fairly underpowered by today's standards. But this is pretty much the opposite problem of what you can say about the Apple TV 4K. The Apple TV 4K's hardware was way overpowered for what a streaming box needs, and the Steam Link app for tvOS runs pretty well. The last upgrade I needed to test this out fully was a super long ethernet cable to make sure everything was wired into the network. If you're using game streaming over a wireless network, 
you're going to have a bad time. I'll leave a link to the extra long ethernet cable I got in the description because it came with convenient little clips to run it around doors and stuff in your house. The wired connection is especially important for game streaming, even if you have fast Wi-Fi because of things like packet loss and latency. So if you're a Wi-Fi warrior and you've been resisting for years like I have, maybe because you're afraid of that cable being an eyesore in your house or apartment, take a look. Can you see the wire? So once I was permanently wired in, I tested out the Steam Link app for Apple TV fully. I found it was performing very well over my test with the wired connection, and the Apple TV is completely natively controllable via Bluetooth remotes such as the Xbox Series controller or the PS5 DualSense, including waking up the system. So it was time to move on to my next item down the line, choosing a game organizer. And this was a little bit more difficult than you would think. Of course, when using the Steam Link app, Steam is a game organizer, so that's your first choice, right? It's made to display and organize games that you've bought through Steam. More on this later, but without giving up too much, I moved on to Playnight. Playnight worked fantastically with organizing my games on my computer. But once I tried streaming Playnight over Steam Link, I ran into some issues. The most game breaking of which is that if you've launched Playnight through Steam Big Picture, your inputs get passed into Playnight, but not the game that Playnight's launched. So your controls may or may not be lost in Steam Overlay Limbo. I even tried some workarounds to get around this, but they proved too unreliable to recommend in this video. You'll end up troubleshooting more than you will gaming. So I defeatedly moved on from Steam Link, determined to try something else that'll work better. I began thinking of what other game streaming apps might be available on tvOS, and I found the AMD Link app. And I had an AMD graphics card at the time, so I figured that might work perfectly. However, the AMD Link app for Apple TV doesn't even launch. It's really disappointing. AMD ought to fix this ASAP because this is just unacceptable. And this could have been the end of the video if this worked properly. So unfazed, I marched on to my next iteration, Steam Link, but this time with Steam ROM Manager instead of Playnight. What if instead of launching Playnight through Steam and then launching a game, what if we could just launch those games directly through Steam so the controls don't get lost in the Steam overlay limbo? Well, the solution to this is called Steam ROM Manager. Steam ROM Manager has parsers that can create shortcuts to Steam that launch the emulator with your ROM file. This requires a little bit of setup, but once it's done, you can set it and forget it. And I'm glad to say this is ultimately the solution I landed on. So now that we've arrived, let's review the ultimate setup. We have an Apple TV 4K with an Xbox Series controller connected over Bluetooth. We are using the Steam Link app to launch my games that are organized through Steam ROM Manager. And that's it. What's even better about the setup and what makes it so ultimate to me is the polish that it brings. The first being that the Apple TV is already my all around living room media center. I can use the very same Xbox controller connected to my Apple TV to go from playing basically any game in the world to then switching and watching any show in the world. No switching devices, no switching inputs, no switching remotes, all in one place, which is exactly what I was looking for in an ultimate setup. What's more is that now that we've set this up this way, we're not actually limited to the living room. If you have a device with a Steam Link application and a good enough connection, you can play anywhere you want, not just the living room, which I think is pretty cool. Bring it back to the living room for just a moment. Isn't it a pain to repair your Xbox controller to your Xbox every time after you're done using it with the Apple TV? Well, no, I've thought of that too. The Xbox Series controller actually has dual Bluetooth connections. Just tap the sync button twice and you can switch to your second device. And when it's time to switch back to the first one, you just long press for about a second or two. And when you're done with the Xbox controller, just hold the Xbox button for five or six seconds until the controller turns itself off. Even the older style Xbox One controller got this feature in a recent firmware update. Make sure your controller's up to date and give it a try. As an honorable mention, I will also say that the Apple TV actually has some decent games. There are lots of games on the tvOS App Store as well as in the Apple Arcade subscription. Apple Arcade is already included in my Apple One family plan, so I have it anyways. Me and my girlfriend have gotten pretty competitive in many motorways. I was also very excited to see some big names come to Apple Arcade, like Castlevania's Grimoire of Souls, which was released as an Apple Arcade exclusive just a few months ago. Granted, this isn't the perfect setup for everyone. If your first thought is, but what about the input lag? Then, man, you already know the answer. Is this going to be faster or better than sitting down in front of an actual computer and playing? No. Is this a viable option for playing your games in another room of the house or anywhere in the world? Yes, absolutely. And I personally think that for me, this is the ultimate couch gaming setup. It's also provided me with a nice opportunity to organize all of my retro ROMs into a nice front end like Steam. You can see the game artwork, set filters, and find the game I wanna play in seconds, rather than sift through a bunch of folders, which is apparently what I did before. So once we got a few key pieces of this setup down, the rest of the puzzle started falling in place. If you have a wired connection, Steam ROM manager, and a Steam link client, you can have yourself a very robust game streaming setup. And for everything else, there's always the office chair. Thanks for watching. Peace.